Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome back to my top five games of 2015. Today I am joined by Martin, also known as In the Little Wood. Hello! <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm trying not to burp at the minute. Yeah, in the warm up to this, he's just been burping in my ears. Just been non-stop. belching right into the I, microphone. Yeah, pretty much. I apologise if it happens during this. I know the little little bur- belch that just slips out there. A little, a little oh. burpy here and there. Oh. Okay. Is that how, what your burps sound like? Uh, you know, like girls don't fart or these girls don't poop. They also oh, no. don't burp. They just go. Oh, mine, oh, mine oh, are nice. disgusting. Like I think the audience would agree as well, because um, I do. I am known to uh, drink Coca Cola and then record Flux Bodies. And oh just, no. Yeah, just come out with these giant, deafening just <laughs> roars. Change it to Belch Bodies. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That was going to be our season three. Uh, I see. Spoilers. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, we have some games to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And, um, um, well, let's get straight into it. So, straight off the cuff, what is your number five game of 2015? Uh, my number, so basically what I did was I went back from my YouTube channel and then I also looked for my Steam most played list. Uh-huh. Um, and I completely forgot about this game, even though I absolutely <laughs> adored it. Um, it's Mike Bithell, the guy that made Thomas Was Alone. Yeah. His brand new title, Volume. Volume, okay. I was really, really into it because I've always quite enjoyed the Metal Gear Solid games, but I've never really been so much into the, the shooting and all that sort yeah. of stuff. I just love the whole stealth element and aspect to it and using little different gizmos and gadgets um, and that's basically what this game was it was just solely that um, and it was just so cool so like the premise of the story is that um, if I remember correctly a dictator has overthrown the UK he's overthrown the Queen um, and basically it's kind of a Robin Hood story yeah. where instead of him stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, um, this guy called Loxley um, is in a factory using like a... The reason I love it is because I'm really into my VR stuff, like Oculus and everything. Yeah. And this is like projection stuff. Like this is like next level VR. Um, and basically he's showing people how to steal from the rich and take for themselves so he's basically like broadcasting essentially like on twitch um to the world of how to steal from banks and all these other places that this dictator owns yeah um and it was just so so cool and there are all sorts of like different gadgets that you can use in the game like um there's a lot of things to do with noise so you can like throw a thing and it'll either stick to the wall or it'll continue to bounce off the walls and then when you press the trigger again it'll actually ping and there's a certain radius around it mm. and if it lands on the uh the, the same space as a robot the robot will walk towards it and you can use that to like clear a way to walk through a certain path and everything. Um, and there are lasers and there are keys and doors and machines and oh, it's just so good. Yeah. Okay. I love that game to bits. I can't I can't hype it up enough. And also as well, um, it has an entire community of people that are building levels for it. So as well oh, as playing through yeah. the standard 100, you also get a creator as well. And people have made some really really cool stuff. Okay. Well, I I think when I looked at it I was a bit put off by the visuals like yeah. I, I don't know why I think it's because like Mike Bithell obviously made Thomas Was Alone mm-hmm. and this sounds really weird to say but I was kind of really attached to those oblongs and the two Tinas you'd be surprised though there's a lot of narrative in this game okay so you can you, that's why I didn't do any YouTube videos on it because you the, just wanted the, to I wanted to enjoy the vocals yeah and it's actually voiced uh, the main character he's voiced by Charlie McDonald Charlie is so cool like from YouTube oh yeah, yeah. I remember that yeah oh god yeah he's even in the trailer for it as well the did a live action trailer and you see Charlie walk into like this factory and then the mask comes <laughs> over him um, and it even features Dan Bull as well yeah I thought so yeah I remember like ages ago when it came out there was kind of those names being dropped mm-hmm. that, I think it's really the thing about I love about Mike Bithell is that he does come up with some interesting ideas like yeah. it's not just a game like there is something always a bit odd about it like you know especially when Thomas Was Alone came out and you're like am I really about to play a game full of blocks yeah. like really what the I hell I love that weird question in that when we're Minecraft YouTubers or have been for years yeah. we're like really blocks yeah oh, like oh god. my god really who would want to play that I'm going to get emotionally attached to some blocks like jeez <laughs> whatever I've never loved a ra- rectangle so much <laughs> no, never since the Tetraminos in Tetris oh god <laughs> Oh, screw those guys. Uh, So that's (laughs) number five. So what's in at number four? Uh, See, the list gets really tricky now. Um, So number four, I've gone for Splatoon. Oh, okay. I was hoping this would be on your list. I love Splatoon. I just thought it was brilliant. It was the first time in the last, I'd probably say like the last decade, that I feel like shooters have really tried to spice it up a little bit or there's been a different style of shooter. Yeah. Um, The closest thing you could probably compare it to in terms of gameplay is maybe Gears of War. Just (laughs) 
just purely because of the third person aspect yeah. of it. But in all honesty, it's just it's an entirely separate beast. The fact that it uses the ink and the swimming mechanics, yeah. various different kinds of guns. Uh, this like the campaign is brilliant as well. Um, I actually started speedrunning the campaign. Um, I've always enjoyed wat- watching speedrunners at like SGDQ yeah. and AGDQ, and I looked at Splatoon and people can beat it in just under an hour. Um, so I thought I'd give that a try, and it's so much more exciting to play when you're speed running it because <laughs> you're really trying to like fine tune all the movements and stuff, and the right. game lends itself so perfectly to it. Um, and there's very little in the way of RNG as well when it comes to the level, so you can really like you know dive into it. Um, Do you know I oh, haven't even so touched the single player? I just like, go to I go to the multiplayer all the time, dude. I know, right? I I'm, just I'm usually like that with shooters. I can't I can't ever recite anything that's happened in a COD multiplayer. Yeah. Halo, I've played the single player, but it was just more of like a an enemy wave fest. Yeah. But yeah, the single player is very, very good. There's even a little plot twist at the end and everything. Oh my God, maybe I need to get involved with that. You need to. It's really good. And like the thing is with the campaign is it's not the longest campaign in the world, Mm. but... It, it, literally every I guess re- every like three or four missions it introduces a new mechanic or a new way of using the ink or items to make your way through so right the way up until like you you face the final boss you feel like you're learning new techniques mm-hmm. um, so you never have that kind of like dull like you know half hour period where you go oh this is just more of the same but in a different layout um, it's just constantly evolving and like you know building on your skills that you already have yeah um, the music the soundtracking is so good oh, I, I knew yeah. it have a bit of a jet set race radio vibe about yeah. it um, and it keeps that all the way throughout and just oh, I don't know I love it I just think it's probably yeah it's, that's why it's in my top five the campaign's solid multiplayer is great the whole like you know the weekends we have to choose a team is brilliant yeah. um, the, like even the item customization as well like you can really make like there's an, like an actual meta to the item and the perk combinations that you have um, and yeah, it's just so good, like so fun. Do you know, I, I kind of had this, well, not a revel. I didn't have the revelation. Someone told me the other day that there's actually kind of a, like a serious backstory to the whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Like we're all in a post-apocalyptic world where everyone's turned into squid kids. We've all mutated, yeah. And it's like, and I was just like, I just shut the thing with the <laughs> paint. Well, that's like, the thing. <laughs> that's why I love watching things like Game Theory because yeah. they just unravel these stories. Like apparently Bowser was like an orphan or something. Yeah. That's why he's so desperate to give these orphans that he's adopted. Like <laughs> all the Cooper kids, they're not actually his. I did wonder if he was just getting busy or what. You no, know, no, like... he's, he's literally adopted all of them because he was a, an orphan himself and he's trying to pinch Bowser to be their mum. So he's like, he has a semi good reason behind it. But... Oh, bless. But yeah. But yeah Squid Kids, post apocalypse, like what? What? Okay, sure. I was just gonna cover people in paint, and that was it. One so. of my favorite things as well. It's a little off topic, but um, what was it called? Oh, it's Splatoon Remix. I'm hoping if I type it in, I'll find it. That's it. Yeah. If you go on Google and type in Splatoons, okay. So S P L A T U N E S. Um, there's basically like a collaboration album that a load of different uh online music artists have made, and they've remixed tracks from the soundtrack. Oh. Um, so some familiar names that I know of are people like Ben Briggs, uh, Hyper Potions. He's on the Monster Cat yeah, media label. Yeah. Um, DJ Cutman as well. He's done a lot of stuff in the past. And this thing is like 15 tracks of the Splatoon soundtrack just mixed up. Um, and some of them are brilliant. They're oh, really, really good. I love this kind of fan base and this like community world that Splatoon has created. Like, It's just so nice as well just yeah. to see a nice game, you know, that's actually still got the kind of grittiness and like the challenge and... Yeah, I mean, there was that meme, wasn't there, like, earlier this year when it was released as well, that, like, all the 13-year-old kids are playing Call of Duty <laughs> yeah. and all the grown-up people are playing Splatoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely one of those people. Definitely. I, I think the reason the community feels so nice as well is because as much as some people don't like it, I actually prefer that the Nintendo Network doesn't allow you to voice comms yeah. and text messages and stuff. It's very, like, restricted. Yeah, but I kind of like that because I yeah. don't want to get called nasty things because I didn't <laughs> no. do so well. It's not very encouraging. No, it's not. <laughs> But there we go. Okay, so that's in at number four. So what is number three? So number three, I think, might be the game that I've played the most. Most certainly, I've played the most on my channel this year. Mm-hmm. I think I've done just over 80 episodes of it oh, now. Oh, jeez. Uh, the Escapist. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That is, like, literally, your channel feels like the Escapist channel this year. Yeah, pretty much. From, so, like, what was it, like, Feb right yeah. the way through to, like, July. And then, like, there was more DLC, like, every other month. Um, and all the DLC has been really cool as well. Like, we've had a couple so far. We've got, currently got uh, Duct Tapes Are Forever, which is based on, like, you know, sort of, like, Bond movies, essentially. Um, what was the other one? There was the A-Team, which was called the Escape Team, which was pretty good. 
And then I think that was it. I think they might have done another DLC which was a which wasn't particularly stylized. But no, yeah, that game is uh, is really really freaking cool. And again, like I've noticed the trend with like every other game in my list so far this year is they all have a creation element to them as well. Like they yeah. have actual level development tools, which is amazing. Uh, but no, the Escapist is really really fun. It's one of those ones where even if you know exactly what you need to do, there is sometimes ways that it can go wrong. Like, you can put out this perfect plan, you can have the right items at the right time, but if a guard w walks down a certain corridor, then you're buggered. <laughs> like, it can just throw everything off. Or if you get your timings even slightly off where you've, like, put some toothpaste on a camera lens so the CCTV can't see you. Yeah. And it all just, like, you know, it falls off before you get back up into the uh, up into the vent grill and you put the grill back on the front. Um, it can just ruin your entire plan. Um, so I've had some serious rage outs. <laughs> there are some times where I'm like, no, I know I could do it with these items. So yeah. I, I literally go to the extent of like finding the Steam folder save, yeah. copying it onto my Dropbox. So I've got a copy of it. And if I fail it, I delete the save. Oh my God. Co copying the that save. That is cheating. And I do it again because I can't be bothered to regather all those items. I guess, yeah. But yeah, that game is very rewarding when you do escape. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really come on leaps and bounds really over the past year. Like it's gotten better as the community have kind of given input as to what they'd yeah. like to see in the game um and yeah i just think it's so good so after a year of playing it are you not tired of it? are you are you still excited to see what they've got coming next you know? um i'm a little tired of it but i think that's why i'm so excited that the dlcs are very stylized yeah because it's not just the typical get out of the bounds of the prison and then run to you know a flat wall at the side and then you're out yeah um so like in the escape team you actually had to assemble uh, an entire tank okay like you had to like build a tank out of like makeshift parts and then then you blow a hole in the wall and you drive out and then i think in duct tapes are forever um i haven't done it yet but there, there are four panels by a massive like i guess a rocket ship um and it's like you've got to get a voice recorder and record one of the guards saying something you have to get a fingerprint from one of the guards to use it on a fingerprint sensor okay. and there are two other things as well so it really mixes up the way that you escape so for now i'm still interested but i don't know how much longer it can yeah. go on for i'm not sure this time next year i'll still be playing it but that's a normal life. <clears throat> Sorry, that's a normal life expectancy yeah. for a game, anyway, isn't no, that's it? That's pretty. I mean, for you to be kind of captured by it for a year, I think that's yeah. a pretty damn good innings, you know. Yeah, and they've done, you know, the spin-offs like The Walking Dead as well. That yeah. was kind of interesting. Um, that didn't resonate so well with my audience, just because not everybody's played The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, and I found that one extremely easy to get out of the prisons of. Right. Like I literally, you just give each one of your teammates um, a weapon. You go into the bar and we cleared the whole thing out within like two minutes and then that was the level done. Mm. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. okay sure. Just job done. Because <laughs> I, I let them just stand on the front lines. They clear out the zombies yeah. for me because you can't train your uh, teammates up. Okay. You've only got to train yourself up. But if you're not having to get involved in the combat, then it's, you know, it's a cakewalk really. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, the escapists. Okay, so that's the escapists in at number three. So what's up for number two? Uh, number two, just purely because it's a game that's kind of brought me and a few friends really close together over the year uh, and made us fall out a few times as well. Rocket League. <laughs> oh yep. my God, I know exactly what you mean about the whole like falling out with each other. And, yep. Yeah, we've called each other terrible, terrible oh, words. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten, uh, there's been enough salt uh, to thaw the streets of Bristol if it snows this year <laughs> Jesus I pretty much stopped playing it on my channel because I was just like I can't like let this go out like how many like <laughs> how nasty this gets because as well like we do the thing of like swearing at each other but then as soon as the match is done it's like okay we're, we're fine we're fine we're fine we're fine we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> but like obviously if I was just to put a video out of us saying really horrible things to mm -hmm. each other like it would just it, everyone would be like has the young cast broken up why are mommy and daddy fighting you know? <laughs> <laughs> or they'll feel like it's okay for them to say those kinds of things to us yeah. as well which is not okay yeah it's not okay no <laughs> that game is so good like it's just such a simple concept really well implemented and uh, actually i i haven't played it for about a month because i've been so busy with conventions and traveling yeah. and stuff but i sat down the other day with my same group of friends and they've added all these kind of like parameters that you can tweak in the game now okay so you can have the ball be a cube instead you can change the gravity settings uh the general speed i haven't seen this you can set it so you stay on the floor like like there are all these wacky settings that you can that you can oh do. Oh my good god! Um, you can set it so everything is normal, but then when you boost, the boost is like hella quick, <laughs> like yeah. really really yeah. fast. Um, and you can make the ball vary in sizes as well. So you can make it a really tiny, like actual football size football. Yeah. Or you can go right the way up to I'm talking like a mini globe type thing. 
Oh my god. So it god. barely fits in the goal. Like, so you have to get it pretty yeah, much like to, pixel right. perfect. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to try those as a group. Definitely. Like, that'll be like Christmas live stream material. <laughs> It's really, really fun. And then they did things like, you know, they had the DeLorean when it was Back to the Future Week. Oh, I love that one. And they've got all the various things. And like, oh, I don't know. I just, I think it's just a simple concept, but well done. And they haven't tried to do anything too yeah. crazy with it. Yeah. I think what I love is just seeing an indie title just go from kind of relative obscurity to exploding yeah. into this giant thing. Giving that it just away like, on PS4 for free was oh the best God. move they could ever have done. Yeah. Like, it just, it, I just have a lot of love for the devs. Mm-hmm. And like, I just think, oh my god it's just yeah it's really kind of made this year for me almost yeah like yeah I I totally get what you mean though like it is frustrating but I cannot (laughs) stop playing it yeah that's the thing we we can just sink hours into it and we can play 3v3s 4v4s 2v2s like all of them feel just as satisfying to play Mm. and like the thing is is when you whenever you think you're good at Rocket League if you go to the Rocket League subreddit you'll realise you're actually really terrible there are people who can dance around in the skies if they're on some magical carpet ride they're like using the boost in all sorts of directions to like basically juggle the ball in the air straight into the goal and it's ridiculous (laughs) but it's one of those games though because like there's a lot of multiplayer games that I suck at but like the, the the community and the game itself is so kind of I don't know MLG pro plays that you just don't want to improve you're just like I just I don't have the kind of mental resilience to put up with the abuse I'm gonna get yeah. and like to, to get anywhere near vaguely good but with Rocket League I actually feel completely different I'm like oh I know I suck at this but when I see someone do something cool I don't go oh god I'm never gonna be able to do that or anything I, I, I feel you're like damn that was a yeah, pretty amazing goal yeah I feel like inspired that yeah. I want to kind of go back and try and really, really try yeah. <laughs> to do something good. And again, that's another game where they've relatively... Or, um, there is a text chat, but nobody ever uses it. Everybody really seems to be on board with the using the uh, the D-pad to do, like, you know, the little ping messages yeah. that you can do. Like, you know, good job. Good job, kid. You know, great goal. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, Rocket League, I think, is definitely one of the best titles of the year, hands down. Awesome. But not quite the best. Not quite. So what is your number one game of 2015? So it's like the salt scale gets stronger as I go up this uh, up this chart. <laughs> like volume was okay. Splatoon, I had my rage moments. Escapist, yeah. I rage quite hard. Yeah. Rocket League, I call people terrible words. In which case, I think I know what your number one's gonna be. <laughs> just wanna, just you, from reading your Twitter account, sometimes like Jesus Christ. Do you want to say it? No, you take it away, kiddo. Number one, Super Mario Maker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate it, but I love it so much. Yeah. Oh God, I actually set um. A brand new PB yesterday. It hasn't gone out on my channel as, okay. as of as filming this, but I finally got to call 16 of 16 in the 100 expert challenge. Yeah. I didn't beat it, but <laughs> that's at least I set a new PB and I, I, I've been hitting a brick wall for weeks. Yeah. Um, but the game is just so, so good. Like, uh, it's weird because it doesn't have a single player campaign. It is literally yeah. just levels that people have created. Um, and I think the reason I get so salty is because the reason those levels are put in the uh, the expert bracket is because they have such a low completion rate. But that can be sometimes just because it's such a terribly designed level that no one wants to put up with the nonsense. Yeah. Um, so it is a bit of a weird one. Like it's, sometimes I feel like, oh God, I'm not improving, but then I actually look at the levels I've been given. And I'm like, actually, I was given a bit of a shitty hand. Yeah. Um, but no, that game is brilliant. And I, I hope they continue to add to it as well. Yeah. Um, they kind of got to keep it within canon Mario. But one thing that I've been wanting the last week or so that I don't think they're going to add, but they really should, is kind of Christmassy themed stuff. Yeah, that would be really nice. I would love to play through some Christmas levels. The only thing that we have that's remotely wintry are ice blocks. Yeah, and oh, that's no. It. No, 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 no. No ice. I couldn't do no. levels entirely through December with just ice blocks. Oh, my I would, God. I'd be a blubbering mess. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But so my experience of um, Super Mario Maker uh-huh. is, well, I'm terrible at construction games. Like, Little Big Planet couldn't couldn't make like I'd see people make these beautiful levels and I'd be like well I don't even know how to put yeah. a thing down Minecraft well everyone can say what they want about my Minecraft abilities and stuff like that so I can't build at all and I just get that serious envy when I see people like really getting to grips with the tools and making these absolutely 
amazing mm-hmm. levels, and then you get the sadistic ones. And, yep. and to me, it's I don't know what it is, but Super Mario Maker it seems even more sadistic than any other like creation game. It's just the ever. Kaizo blocks. Like there's actually become a, a like almost like a, a meme in itself on my channel now where everybody wants shirts that say it. It just says say no to Kaizo. <laughs> so whenever there's a Kaizo block, everyone's like, nope, nope, peace out, skip the level. <laughs> don't want anything to do with it. So for those who don't know, what is a Kaizo block? A Kaizo block is basically in Mario, you know when you jump into what looks like an empty space, yeah. but there's actually an invisible block there. And when you hit it, it becomes visible and you inevitably fall into a pit or something. Yeah. Uh, that is a Kaizo block. It's an invisible block that that's there pretty much solely for the purpose of trolling. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people are against them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, some of the levels people make are really, really brutal. I mean, Pangea is the best uh, demonstration of that. Yeah. It, it took him, what, five hours to create one of his levels and nine hours to complete it once. Oh, God, yeah, I remember hearing that. So yeah. he could publish it. And it is one of those, like, you have to do everything frame perfect. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to look it up, just search in Pangea. I think it's P-A-N-G-E-A, Mario, and you'll see people doing the level i think even to right now or the last time i checked there was only like 25 people on the planet that have completed his level <laughs> just why that's mental why do you know what's horrible as well because you think oh super mario lovely mario lovely nice nope lovely lovely mario you know kind of figure from my childhood like you know second dad kind of thing and it's just evil it's just it's an really evil game evil. <laughs> Just there are some levels you get that are just clusters of enemies just being thrown at you and you have no idea what to do with it. But I don't know. It's, yeah, as much as I hate it, I do love it as well because I love the randomness of yeah. it. And it is so satisfying. Like some levels when I'm doing my series, I star them because I'm like, I'm going to come back to that because it feels like it's a good level, but it's going to burn through too many of my lives right now. <laughs> and I, I, I kid you not, when I live streamed on, I think Wednesday, I played this one level, which was like a Bowser Castle level. So there was just lava everywhere. There were fire sticks, bullet bills, you name it, it was in there. And it took me an hour and a half to complete that one level. Oh my God. And I didn't lose interest the audience didn't lose interest like I held a solid 1,000 viewers yeah and then when I finally beat it we all just lost our minds oh it was so good yeah and I got I got really stubborn as well I was like okay well I've done three quarters of it like six times now yeah should I just download it into the maker and then like you know just drop just... myself into the same spot each time but no I, I stuck to it and I finally did it all in one go and oh it was the best I bet you feel like it was the best achievement that you've ever done in uh-huh. your life so far <laughs> it helps that uh, it helps that I actually finally did it because about 20 minutes prior to that I got really close and I like stormed out of my room oh. and when I came back in I like kicked a cardboard box across the room and <laughs> oh my god and it's so like at odds the idea of you being super ragey yeah it doesn't happen that often yeah. but oh my god yeah I, looking at your list you've chosen games that on the surface are like the loveliest sparkliest brightest mm-hmm. you know cutest games ever but you're right they are like increasingly salty yeah. like you've had a very salty year like volume is just tricky because you're like I was totally hidden around that corner yeah. and then Splatoon you just get angry when you don't like fall into the ink yeah. or if you're like climbing a vertical wall and then that bloody clean of wave thing comes yeah. around gets rid of all your ink you're like oh god damn it yeah escapist i just rage at the guards rocket league i rage at friends <laughs> mario maker i rage at the my world. existence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so an incredibly rage quitting top five yeah this is probably my from, saltiest year yeah. and by the whole 25 years of living this is the year i've been saltiest from the calmest happiest member of the yogs cast oh, what dear. a controversy there well thank you so much for joining me martin i hope 2016 no is a lot calmer I for bloody you hope so. at least for your heart as well <laughs> you know so you can <laughs> You know. I can't do this for another two years, Kim. <laughs> exactly. I can't do it. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you guys at home, let me know what your top five games of 2015 have been in the comments below. And thank you again for joining me, Martin. No problems. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye.